Welcome. We are going to look at section 4.5 today. We're solving quadratic equations. The new twist is you choose the method that you're going to use. So in the last several lessons, we have gone over methods for solving quadratic equations. We've done factoring. We've done the quadratic formula. We've done square root property. We've done completing the square. Now you have to decide what method you're going to use. So we're going to try to be as efficient as possible. So how do we choose a method? Usually, um, well, look at the form of the equation. So usually in an application, the method to solve is not given. The person solving has to choose. So to most efficiently solve a quadratic equation, what does the equation look like? It doesn't really have to say standard form. What does the equation look like? If x appears only once in the equation and the x is squared or inside of a square, solve by taking square roots. If both an x squared and an x appear, set it equal to 0 and try to solve by factoring. Um, if you can't solve it, if you can't factor quickly, Try completing the square of the quadratic formula. Um, if your leading coefficient is not 1, like it says right here, and dividing by a creates a fraction, you probably don't want to complete the square. So we could solve using the quadratic formula. Um, so let's dive into the examples and talk as we go about what method to use. So example 1, solving this equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is notice I have an x squared and I have an x. And my strategy then is to set it equal to 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it equal to 0. So I've got a positive 6 in front of that x squared, so I'm going to leave that over there. I'm going to add a 12x to zero that out, and I'm going to subtract a 21. So I'm going to add a 12x. I'm going to subtract a 21. So I have my equation written in this fashion. 6x squared plus 12x minus 21 equals 0. Now I'm going to look for a GCF before I do anything else. Uh, 6, 12, and 21 are all divisible by 3. So I'm going to factor out a 3. Now I could throw that factor away. For now I'm just going to leave it there. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 21 divided by 3 is 7. 3 is never 0. 3 is just 3. So what I really need to solve is 2x squared plus 4x minus 7 equals 0. So if you have a constant like a 3, you can just throw it away because it's not going to equal 0 by itself. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to factor this thing. Uh, let's see. Can I find two numbers? So a times c is negative 14. Let's look at these guys. a is 2 b is 4, c is negative 7. Remember, I need two numbers that multiply to create negative 14, which is my a times c, but I need them to add up to 4. I need a sum of 4. Um, let's see. Factor pairs of 14. That would be 1 and 14. Negative will have to be on the smaller number. That sum is not right. 2 and 7 is all on the other one. Negative 2 and 7 add up to 5. That's not going to work. Okay, it's not going to factor. So I'm going to go to the quadratic formula. All right, so I'm going to do the discriminant b squared minus 4ac. Let me move that over. b squared minus 4ac is going to equal, let's plug in the numbers. 4 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 7. If you do the math on that, you come up with 72. So that is 72. I'm going to draw a line in through here so that I'm not going further that way. And oh, now I'm going to go x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of the discriminant all over 2 times a. So 72, 
you're going to simplify that radical. What is 72? I'm going to do that over here. 72 is 2 times 36. Oh, but 36 is a perfect square. So I have a pair of 6s. So I can make that negative 4 plus or minus 6 square root of 2 over 4. Because the square root of 72 is 6 square roots of 2. Okay. I did that fairly fast. So you get stuck, simplify it. All right, now what I have to be careful of is I have to reduce this very carefully. I'm going to take a two out of both the negative four, the six, and the four that's in the denominator. So I get that. What I then have is two solutions. We have x equals negative two plus 3 square root of 2 over 2. And we have x equals negative 2 minus 3 square root of 2 over 2. And those are our two solutions. Okay, we're going to look next at example 2. So example 2. We're going to first of all set it equal to zero. What I cannot do is divide an m out of both sides and throw it away. If I do that, I've lost a solution. So I'm going to subtract a 2m from both sides, and I'm going to set it equal to zero. Okay. Now I'm going to factor. So m squared and 2m. Notice they have an m in common. So I'm going to pull the m out to the front. And then I have m minus 2. I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. So we're using the factoring method. Hmm. Notice at the beginning I had an m squared and an m. So we're on step 2 there. Both m squared and m appear. Set it equal to 0. And then we just went ahead to the factoring step. So m equals 0 or m minus 2 equals 0. Add a 2 to both sides of this, we get m equals 2. That's a funny looking 2. Let me make it look a little better. My 2s are a little off. All right, so we get m equals 0 or m equals 2. Two solutions most of the time. All right, not always, but most of the time. Okay, example 3. We have six of them all together. Let's see what happens in example 3. Example 3. So we're going to do, uh, notice we have a k squared and a k both. So I'm going to set it equal to 0, and I'm going to either use the quadratic formula or factor. k squared minus 14k minus 32 equals 0. So I'm going to do a times c and get negative 32. I need two numbers that multiply to create negative 32, but I need a sum of negative 14. Uh, let's see, how about um, the negative needs to be on the bigger number, that's not it, 2 and negative 16, up oh, there it is, 2 and negative 16. So I can go to the box and do that, All right? whatever method you're comfortable with, k squared, 2k negative 16k. I didn't give myself a big enough box, did I? Negative 16k. And finally, uh, negative 32, which is my last term, right? Negative 16k. All right, we got k, we've got negative 16, we've got k, we've got positive 2. So if I set the factors equal to 0 at this point, if you want to write it out this next step, you can. But be careful, not too many shortcuts, right? k plus 2 equals 0, or k minus 16 equals 0. All right, let me extend that line so I don't encroach too much into that space. All right, so I've got negative 2, 
And we've got positive 16. Right. So k equals negative 2 or k equals 16. And we are done. All right, example four. So I'm going to go back and look at my instructions again. Look at the form of the equation. 12 plus 4x squared equals 32. There's an x squared. Ah. That x only shows up once, and it's inside the square. So I'm going to subtract a 12. I'm going to try using that square root property, which means I need to isolate the x squared. Not there yet. So I move the 12, divide by the 4, we get x squared equals 5. Okay. Remember to do a plus or minus square root. x equals plus or minus square root of 5. I need a positive and I need a negative. Oh, there they are. Square root of 5 doesn't simplify, so it's positive square root of 5, and it is negative square root of 5. And we're done. Okay, next up, example 5. We're going to take a look at... Let's see. Oh, it's already equal to 0. There's an n squared and there's an n. So let's see, can I factor that? 8 times 3 is 24. Am I going to find two numbers that multiply to create 24 and add up to 1? No, I don't think so. Nope, not going to happen. So I'm going to go to the quadratic formula. a equals 8, b equals 1, c equals 3. a times c is 24. But there's no way I'm going to get two numbers to multiply to create 24 and add up to 1. Now it can happen. So we're going to go with the quadratic formula. So we're going to calculate b squared minus 4ac. I'll switch to this color for a second. b squared minus 4ac. We might as well move over here. We've got lots of space, so let's use our space. b squared minus 4ac is going to be 1 squared minus 4 times 8 times 3. All right, calculator or whatever you're going to use to do that, but that's going to be 1 minus 96, which is negative 95. Be very careful with that calculation, especially if the A or the C is negative. All right, um, in this case it was just 1 minus 96, so fairly straightforward. So now we're going to plug numbers into the quadratic formula. My solutions, n, are going to equal negative b plus or minus the square root of my discriminant all over 2 times 8. So that's going to be negative 1 plus or minus. How do we simplify the square root of a negative number? We pull the negative out as an i. We have i times the square root of 95, and then I have a 16 in the denominator, 95. I want to take a quick look at that. 95 is divisible by 5. 95 divided by 5 is 19. That radical is not going to simplify. So my two solutions are negative 1 plus i times the square root of 95 over 16 and negative 1 minus i times the square root of 95 over 16. And we are done. Okay. Example 6. Notice the form of the equation. Notice the x is only showing up once and it's inside the square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the square and use the square root property. So I'm going to add a 9 to both sides. So I'm going to have 3 times x plus 4 squared equals 9. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. I now have x plus 4 squared equals 3 because 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides 
remembering to tack a plus or minus square root on that 3. So x plus 4 equals plus or minus square root of 3. And I can either write down two equations right now, or I can subtract 4 from both sides and make it x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 3. Two solutions, negative 4 plus the square root of 3 and negative 4 minus the square root of 3. We get two irrational solutions. They're irrational numbers because they involve square roots of 3. And that is the end of the notes for section 4.5.